Hi guys, this is Tom and this is Quick Watercolour Birds. In this episode I'm going to show you another flamingo, but this time in flight. Okay, so why another flamingo? Number one, I got requested this from someone who's been watching these videos. And number two, this was a great thing because there were a few things in the last Flamingo that I kind of wanted to expand on and show you a little bit more. One of those being actually much more wet into wet work and loading a wash, which is something I'm gonna talk about in the quick tip section of this video. And for me, that really suits the nature of flying birds in particular, especially at this smaller scale. And just remember guys, this way of working is not the only way to work in watercolor. It's a really fun, quick way to work in watercolor to get very expressive, quick results. As I spoke about last time, I love flamingos for their shapes, their colours, their amazing necks, and then when we take them into flight, everything sort of becomes more exaggerated and more extreme. We see more colours on the underside of the wing, they've got these amazing deep rich darks which I'm going to talk about, and we get this amazing interaction between the body, the extended neck, the head and also then the shape of the wings and we have to decide what we're going to do with those wings which I talk about in the drawing section. So colour wise, uh, a very straightforward palette, much similar to the last flamingo, we've got pyrrole red, warm and orangey, we've got quinacridone magenta which is the really cool pink red so they're kind of opposing reds. This time I've chosen a new gamboge yellow which is much more orangey and it's going to give us some really lovely vibrant oranges in the neck and the body and then finally I've swapped to a thalo blue and thalo blue being a very strong greeny blue which when mixed with the orangey red they cancel each other out and they're going to give us those really beautiful rich darks on the underside of the wing. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoy this one. Some of the previous videos they've kind of been stretching in time so this one I wanted to keep it really quick, really simple and this is a fun one so let's go. To draw something like this it's also the thing that's really hard about it and that is all of these different angles on all of these different shapes that we kind of have to get in the right place and get in the right proportion. So there's a lot to consider here but as always kind of starting with some of the bigger shapes first, like an egg for the body, thinking about the angle that that egg shape is, really holding a pencil or a brush or whatever through the central line or like the dominant line of the wings just to work out, work out the rough angle. Thinking about the big shapes of the wings first, so for me that's kind of a rectangle, that's kind of a triangle, triangle, kind of a slightly abstract kind of curved shape but thinking about those second so angle first big shape second then within the big shapes you can start to kind of chip away make little alterations stick things on and then finally look for the smaller shapes which represent maybe different tones or different colors within there and then we can start to stick on the yet smaller shapes so again looking at the the angle of different aspects of this the negative shape between as mentioned in the last flamingo being really handy look at that lovely negative shape in there look at this lovely big v negative shape here and you can look straight away to see how it's looking is that too steep is it too shallow does it really matter with the wings as long as they feel kind of natural and that's the freedom here is this is kind of the main structure and then we can alter the angle of the wings accordingly to kind of fit in with what we're trying to achieve. Probably the hardest aspect of this was getting the head right, firstly in terms of proportion, but again I started with the egg shape for the head, and if you go back and look at the other flamingo video, I then did a circle for the eye, a triangle for the face, and then stuck the beak on here. When they're flying, or from this angle, they look slightly different. I spoke in the last video about them not being bananaed. In this case, it's ever so slightly different. It's almost like a rectangle first, with a small triangle stuck on the bottom. And again, because of the nature of us looking up at them, they've got more of banana shape, but look very carefully at that. And then this long, interesting neck shape was probably the hardest thing to get, and I broke it into two sections. There was an angle here, and an angle there. And that's basically it. And don't forget guys, you can hop over to my Patreon channel and in the public part of that, I'll put the links down below, you can get hold of the line drawing if you want to give this a go yourself. But let's dive into that paint. Okay, so we're just going to go for it. We are going to keep this one really quick. 
really simple and just let those colours kind of flow together. I'm going to start off with the lighter colours and in this case it's going to be loads of water and plenty of the quinacridone magenta and we're just going to dive in with that lovely big bold brush stroke here and we're going to break it over that area there because we want that kind of broken area where the light is hitting here and then we're going to come in and start kind of building on top of that and again if you've seen some of the other videos we're just letting the the brush do a lot of the work we're going to leave it nice and kind of light there we're going to come on the underside and just bring all of that paint together in kind of one big wash like that and then while it's still wet we need to work very quickly up into the neck and so what we've got there then is one lovely long big wash which we can now kind of drop other colors into so we're creating an initial wash and we're then just going to kind of load that wash which is something i spoke about before with lots of different colors so where can we go a little bit stronger with the color a little bit of the red the orangey red and a little bit of the cooler magenta red and we're just going to drop it in there maybe even a touch of the yellow to warm it up and make it a bit more orangey we're just going to drop it in let the colors do their thing okay, coming in there we can tighten little areas up as well so just get that shape right there bringing the brush to a fine point just in that area and then just drop that paint in let it do its thing let's even drop in a little bit of pure yellow so always nice with watercolour if you've got an opportunity to drop in another colour it's always nice to take that opportunity and then the colours get a little bit more soft pink as they move away from the head so we're going to move into that kind of slightly softer pink but we still want to get some nice strong shadow tones in there so the colour is not going to be as strong but the tone is going to be a little stronger and we're going to bring that into there that lovely colour nice and simple and we're going to do this all in one wash pretty much and uh, we can come down into here. I'm going to come down into there, link those washes together, bring that into there. Nice quick movement of the brush. And we're going to go a little bit warmer under there. But we also want to bring in a tiny, tiny touch of blue just to help cool it down. I'm actually going to take my my uh, tissue and I'm just going to pull out a little bit of a light there so this is a really great trick we can pull out little lights just to give a bit more kind of texture let's get a little bit of that blue too strong a blue so I'm going to go back in and kind of pull it out and that's going to, going to give us a cool color to kind of counteract a lot of these warmer colors almost a bit too strong in there with that pink so I'm going back in with a blue while it's still damp we're just going to kind of hit it where else can we go a little bit stronger in tone so I'm going to come in here. So yeah, that's just a little bit darker and it's going to start giving us that kind of shape and form on the underside, just in there. Really lovely strong colours. So that's a slightly more pinky colour and then we're going to move into that slightly more vibrant orange red. So there's a nice pink colour. Going back in with a damp brush, we're just going to hit there and there. And then we're going back in with our really strong orangey red and that's going to give us that there just nice simple brush stroke do that sort of a thing and then leave it alone let the paint do its thing just leave it be and we are going to come in with a slightly more orangey color as we come up here and come into that area there and then we can start to use just a little bit of kind of pink soft pink line so like a little line there just to trap the light on the wing maybe soften that edge a bit with a damp brush and there we go but letting little bits of the white of the page show through are we going to go while well, it's wet a little bit darker on the underside there and possibly even can we go just a little bit darker under there as long as i'm nice and gentle with it i don't want to go do too much that's probably dark enough and then while this is wet what we're going to do is we're going to come in with our strong vibrant red and we're going to start blocking in this area of the wheat of the wing with a nice strong color but a slightly drier brush maybe so I get some more kind of dynamic brush strokes let the brush do the work there so now we've got a red underside of a wing but we actually want some really deep dark in there so I'm just going to go in with my phthalo blue 
plenty of water and I'm just going to start dropping it in. And the thalo mixing with that lovely um, more orangey blue is going to give us some really lovely rich deep darks under there but they're going to be some nice and natural darks to, where the paint is just kind of flowing together really nicely. Um, almost neat paint now just to get some more kind of jaggedy edges um, kind of in there, some more kind of rough brush strokes. See that's a little bit of a neat line there so I'm going to come back in and kind of rough it up just something like that and bring it out there and then we just let the paint kind of do its thing a little flick in there and it's kind of things are beginning to happen quite nicely so we're going to go back to our lighter colours we're going to come back to a lighter colour up here and get that in maybe more of a pink but with a little bit of an orange feel to it so the, the crimson make sure we've got a nice clean brush for this section we can even come out, actually while this is wet, we can come in and we can pull paint out. Don't leave it too long to do this, but what it does is it breaks up the mass of that area and makes it maybe just not quite so harsh in its blackness. But we don't need to overthink it too much and we're now going to come into here. So there's no rush now, everything's kind of slowed down. We've done kind of the washes that need to work kind of wet into wet we can almost treat that as its own separate area we could go a little bit more ready it's almost like that blue on the underside of the of the bird here is a little bit out of place I'm just going to drop in a little touch of pink and let it bleed don't want to work it too much something like that and we're going to bring that pink down into there and just kind of strengthen that leg colour And we're going to do the same with the underside of this leg, just giving it a little bit of a darker mark, just to make sense of the underside of the bird there. And then we can soften that edge down. So going in with a damp brush, I'm just going to soften that edge down. And then we're basically at getting this bit done up there. So we're going to go to our nice kind of vibrant ready orange colour with a little bit of the yellow and that's going to give us, see if we can do it in as few brush strokes as possible, this kind of lovely colour then letting the brush do a lot of the work so that we get that kind of broken brush stroke. I've gone way over the line there but it doesn't really matter because it's, it's the shape that's important. Let's trap a little bit of light on the back there and break, break that brush stroke there. And then let's bring in a slightly darker colour in order to trap the light on the back there. But I don't want to destroy the brush stroke that I've just done, we're just going to feed some paint into it, which is something that we're going to look at in the quick tip section. Okay, because this flamingo is done so wet into wet, it's a great opportunity to look at kind of loading washes or wash loading. So if we take this wash here and we just lay it down, that's a fairly watery wash. It's going to dry a lot lighter, but then if we start to load it, we take either the same consistency of paint or slightly um, more saturated and we start dropping that into there. And we basically are kind of loading the wash with colour. See, we can just do that sort of thing. If we were to take a wash that was very watery and then take lots of other colours that were the same consistency, even if they're completely different colours, and start dropping that in, does that sort of thing. And then now loading the wash is kind of taking that a stage further. We keep on just loading more and more paint into the wash. We might do it on the edge of the wash like this and we just take more pigment, less water and keep loading, loading, loading that wash with more paint. And we even take a dark and load the edge of it like that. Take a dark and load the edge there and just keep dropping that paint in. Just think of it as taking the existing wash and loading it with more and more pigment and not so much water. 
what would happen if we were to put lots of water into that if we took a really watery wash now so let's say we wanted to inject some yellow into the other side and we're going to mix a wash with loads and loads of water and we start loading it with water you can use it to your advantage but what happens is that paint the less saturated area will s absorb that way but you can get some really interesting things happen we also might get cauliflowers if we're not careful if this paint here for example is nice and dry although it's slightly damp but it's kind of on the way to being dry and then we take a really wet wash and we kind of place that in there watch what happens to this area as it dries it creates cauliflowers which aren't necessarily a bad thing we can use them but we don't always want them they can look not particularly great sometimes so here now we've got a, a slightly dry wash and we can continue to load it with heavier and heavier pigment just keep dropping it in there it's just a way of working kind of wet into wet and then we can continue to load it with more and more pigment and let's just do a little bit of yellow as well so take just the yellow here and then we've got various options we kind of let that dry off a little bit or we just take our very very saturated pigment with very little water and we start placing that in there and obviously with more pigment and less water you're going to get dark colors so on the whole you are loading a light wash with a slightly darker tone if not a much darker tone and then at some point we must leave it alone to just to do its thing you know, start loading that wash in the corner there and what you will also get is kind of incidental colors so that's the last thing I'll kind of show you and it's fairly obvious if I take a, uh, a yellow for example and rather than mixing orange on the palette I just simply take some slightly more saturated red and I kind of load it into the yellow and at some point when these two begin to bleed together which they hopefully will start to do we'll start to get some oranges and we can also mix a kind of in-between orange and we can load that somewhere else so it's a great way to get all of these different kind of colors going on we can then dampen the wash and lighten it as we bring it this way not too much water though damp damp brush and it brings it that way Uh, and then obviously that's we're getting incidental colors there which you can kind of plan and do the same thing we give a yellow but I'm going to bring in a little bit of just that lovely phthalo blue and lay it there and obviously by loading a yellow wash with a blue wash we're going to get some sort of green in this case it's going to be a really interesting green because phthalo is such an intense color and we're just going to let all those colors merge as long as you're quick and you don't move the paint around too much we can actually take this color and we can just we can do that with it we can work it into the wet wash I don't like to work the paint too much because it can look overworked if we do it too much especially once the paint starts to dry if I was to go in and try and do what I'm doing here in there it wouldn't really work we'd um we'd mess the paint up so that's best left alone that's best left alone except that just as an example we could go in with that heavier tone and just load that wash one last time with a really rich intense dark really rich intense dark into there really rich intense dark into there so we're loading 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 the washes and that's it guys I'm going to leave it there it's also a great example of how beautiful watercolor is as a medium look how that did cauliflower a little bit but not too much actually and in this case it's given us a really lovely effect so like I said cauliflowers are not always bad but look at the beauty of watercolour I'm going to let this dry off and show you it one last time once it's dry and then we will get back to the painting okay so that's the quick tips and I'm diving straight into continuing while this is still wet to deepen that shadow in there but while the paint is wet just as we've seen in the quick tips we're kind of pushing that shadow darker and how far do we go up to the back of the body there we can go a little bit darker still a bit more water in there so it flows a bit more and then we're kind of into that shape there and then very finally we are into getting the wing tip here and I'm going to try and do this with fairly too much water in the brush and I want a rougher mark like that there we go that's the sort of mark I'm after so that sort of a thing and then we're going to take our phthalo blue but just water it down a little bit and put some red in it because I don't want it to be quite as intense as that 
and we're going to just come and finish off this part here. So slightly kind of softer touch of the brush just to get that movement and then we're going to come into here and not destroy the white of the paper we're just going to drop our colour kind of into it and that's a nice sharp kind of mix of colours. Don't really want that to happen there so just pull it out again and that's that and then we're going to go to our smaller brush and we can very quickly finish off in here. So you see there's not a lot of blue in this I popped a little bit of blue in here which turned it kind of purpley and the main blue was used to go into the orangey red to give it that kind of really deep rich dark and remember that's because the orange in the red is kind of cancelled out by the opposing kind of green colour in the um, in the blue so very very opposing colours in the colour wheel they kind of cancel each other out and that's why they give us this lovely strength of colour so if there's anywhere we want a little bit more detail it's just in here and we can just kind of do it like that and then again we can use our phthalo very very green with the red and just start initially just dropping it into that area and then just let it bleed up it doesn't have to be dark the whole way but it's quite nice kind of like that and while it's wet let's see if we can just strengthen the underside of the shadow without going too strong a blue just to kind of bring it into there and maybe just a little bit more no too much in that area so go back with a damp brush and we can just pull it out again or move it about so it's not quite so harsh there we go so there we go and these are so much fun it's flying birds quick and simple, letting the paint do its thing and just meld together is one of my favourite aspects of watercolour. We can just lay the colour down as you saw, we load it with more colour, it seems like a, an opportunity missed if we have a damp wash not to drop more colour into it and we just let the paint do its thing. We still have to be a little bit aware of where our darks are, where our lights are, what sort of tone we're going for but as long as we don't go too dark too quickly and we reserve our really dark lights for when we're a bit more confident as to where everything's going then we shouldn't run into any problem. The rest is just getting paint and water down on the paper and seeing what happens. And that's it guys, just a little bit more detail in the head, even less in this one than the last one. And don't forget you can hop over to Patreon to download the line drawing of this, that's completely free in the public section. If it's kind of your thing and you want to see some deeper, longer tutorials about all aspects of painting, you can sign up at various tiers there. The link is down below. I've got so much more to come in this series that I can't wait to share with you. Please do consider subscribing so that you'll be updated with new videos. And if this is your thing, like and share as much as you can because that really helps me out and it keeps these videos being seen. So thanks again, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Happy painting, happy creating, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.